Welcome to this Debaco University video entitled Identifying a White Powder. Here in this video, we're going to be looking at an unknown white powder and some procedures and tests that can be done to work towards identifying it. So here we're looking at a disclaimer here that we'll be identifying in this example some common household items. Now those common household items uh, I have listed here, again everything from table salt, baking soda, table sugar, but I want you to realize that these same uh, concepts can be applied to items that have increased toxicity levels. Now keep in mind that while the substances themselves are unknown and they might be just simple um, household items may have lying around, just remember all laboratory safety procedures should be followed because we don't know what the substance is and also some of the reagents used might have increasing toxicity levels themselves. So treat everything uh, as dangerous and you'll be plenty safe following all the proper safety procedures. So looking at, uh, again, focusing on our household items here, one common test that can be done is simply solubility. Uh, and solubility is, is a chemical property referring to the ability of a given substance, the solute, to dissolve in a solvent. How well does it essentially dissolve? It's a measured in terms of the maximum amount of solute dissolved in a solvent at equilibrium. So how much, for example, if we're looking at water, and we'll say simple table sugar, how much sugar can you put in that water before you start to get a, uh, it falls out of solution? How much can it suspend in there? What's its solubility? So a water solubility test, for example, water solubility is one of the most important and frequently used physical chemical properties of chemicals. Uh, this test to see if the substance is, is polar, meaning it will dissolve, or nonpolar. The extreme example would be oil uh, and salt. For example, oil won't dissolve in water because it's nonpolar. Salt is an ionic compound, it is polar, uh, and therefore it will dissolve quite well in there. You want to add about a quarter of a gram of a sample to a test tube and then add about five mils of water and a stopper and shake that test tube. And then a judgment will have to be determined whether the solid does or does not completely dissolve in that water. So again, the solubility test is a great quick little test you can perform. Then we get into hydrochloric acid solubility. Uh, this follows the same concept as water solubility, but for some of the items listed, here's a few, there are a few hints. Bicarbonates and carbonates react with acid to form carbon dioxide and bubbles will form. Calcium sulfate in, in cornstarch are not soluble in 10% hydrochloric acid. So that's kind of a little bit of a hint there. The rest of the powders are soluble, at least the ones listed in those household um, items list. So this gives you an indication for at least an initial step for classifying what white powder you might be dealing with. Then we have vinegar. So bicarbonates and carbonates react with the acetic acid, which is uh, basically the acid in vinegar. Vinegar is 5% acetic acid, and they'll form carbon dioxide bubbles, as we see here in the image in the beaker. It's the same as 10% hydrochloric acid test. So again, we want to typically do multiple tests to confirm uh, what a substance we might be, have as an unknown white powder. We have the iodine test. So uh, starches, for example, react with um, iodine to form a blue complex. Okay, you still want to use about that uh, quarter gram of powder that you suspect to be cornstarch in a test tube at two drops of, of a tincture of iodine, which is a solution of iodine dissolved in alcohol, to the test tube and a few drops of water and mix the contents and note the color. If it's uh, kind of a yellow orange, it would be a negative, and if it's a purple black, that would be kind of a positive um, test there. Going to iron nitrate test. So here we're going to transfer about five drops of the substances that were in the water soluble well plate test. We're going to use those same components from there. Place a drop or two of the iron nitrate solution in each test well. Indicate a purple, which is a positive coloration, we see continue here, or a light brown orange would be a negative coloration. Now that purple, if it's well lit, you can see that deep purple color. However, it could almost look black if we're, if, depending on the lighting. So keep in mind, this would be an example, again, of a positive and a negative test. If you have it lit well, you'll have that nice kind of deep purple color. Now the sodium hydroxide or uh, NaOH uh, test, magnesium sulfate reacts with sodium hydroxide, NaOH, to form insoluble magnesium hydroxide, which is a solid precipitate. Okay, so only use about that quarter gram of powder you suspect is magnesium sulfate in a test tube and about five mils of water. Stopper and then shake the test tube to dissolve the magnesium sulfate. Add about 20 drops of the 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide to the solution and record your observations. So this is again another great visual test here. Uh, getting here, we get a nice 
uh, went purple to a nice pink color of phenophthalein test. The phenophthalein is often used as an indicator in acid-base titrations and turns colors in acidic solutions and pink in basic ones. So note that phenophthalein is slightly soluble in water and usually dissolves in alcohols for, the, for use in experiments. We kind of see that example here of that pH of 8 to 12. We definitely have that uh, pink coloration. We have a pH here of very acidic pH of that 0 to 8, very clear. Keep in mind, though, above 12, we can also kind of get a, a clearing of the solution um, as well sometimes. So just be aware, so if we add it as drops, and we start to see that pretty pink color, we're indicating here that we have kind of a base going on in that test tube. Uh, to get a little bit more precise, we can also go to pH testing. This is using a universal indicator. It can be used to test the pH of only water-soluble substances via a color change. So keep that in mind that if it fails the water solubility test, the pH test is not going to be one that we want to use. Simply add drops of the universal indicator directly to the test tube of the water, solubility test, and record the color, and that will help indicate, based on the color matching, what pH you're dealing with for those water-soluble substances. Then we have Benedict's reagent. And this is to test for simple sugars. We have the procedure all listed here. Keep in mind, Benex reagent does require the solution to be added, mixed, and then heated in boiling water bath for about three to five minutes. After that time, you may observe a color change of the solution, or at that time is when you want to observe the potential for a color change. You have that aqua blue to kind of green coloration that would be a negative test. You have that yellow to orange uh, that would be an indication of a positive test after heating. Note this test cannot detect uh, the simple sugar sucrose. So again, these all do have limitations, so just be mindful of those. Now we have our Bayeret's reagent here, and here we're looking at the test for proteins. So there's a procedure uh, listed here. Uh, keep in mind that we want to observe any color change again, but we want to allow this reaction to occur potentially for up to five minutes. It's not a quick reaction and go look at it. We want to let it sit for about five minutes. And we have that kind of like denim blue uh, coloration that would be negative. If we have that lavender purple coloration, that would be indication of a positive test. So again, hopefully this helps kind of for the common household substances be able to determine what those white powders are. Are. Keep in mind to follow all laboratory uh, procedures, uh, stay safe, even though they have a low toxicity. Some of these uh, reagents here we want to be very careful with.